This is about moving beyond just damage control and towards supporting active regeneration. We've spent decades fighting hair loss by either blocking hormones or forcing blood vessels open. But what if we've been missing the bigger picture? What if the real key is regeneration, non-hormonal science-backed alternatives, options that work with the body, not by suppressing or overriding it? What makes peptide science so interesting is that it is a regenerative approach. Instead of shutting down a hormone hormone or forcing a blood vessel open? What if you could simply give the body back the signals it naturally uses to repair tissue and to support healthy follicles? Today we're diving into one of the most talked about non-hormonal combos in hair science right now. GHKCU copper peptide and adenosine. One repairs, one activates growth. This is an approach that taps into your body's own repair and rebuild system to give your scalp a second chance. For years, the fight against pattern baldness has revolved around two big names, minoxidil and finasteride. They're the most researched tools we have, but they also come with well-known trade-offs. Finasteride lowers DHT by blocking 5-alpha reductase, and while that can stop follicles from shrinking, it also means you're you're messing with your hormone pathways. For some people, that comes with the risk of side effects like sexual dysfunction or mood changes. It's a tough decision. Preserve your hair or avoid altering your hormone balance. Minoxidil, on the other hand, has its own issues. Even though it's widely used, we still don't fully understand how it works. It likely improves blood flow and influences potassium channels, but it can also cause irritation. It can cause unwanted facial hair and a shedding phase that scares a lot of people away. So if you want to take action, but you don't like the baggage that comes with these two big medications, minoxidil and finasteride, then this video is for you. GHKCU copper peptide and adenosine. GHKCU is a naturally occurring copper peptide that our body uses for repair, for collagen production, and for anti-inflammatory signaling, and also tissue regeneration. On the scalp, it seems to support healthier follicles by improving blood flow, by calming inflammation, and by strengthening strengthening the follicle's structural environment, and also by potentially activating growth pathways like and with age, unfortunately, it seems to drop, like many other things. Adenosine is a molecule involved in cellular energy signaling. Topically, it appears to prolong the antigen or growth phase. It increases hair thickness, and it lightly improves blood flow through vasodilation. So the idea behind pairing them is pretty straightforward. GHKCU helps rebuild the environment, and adenosine helps keep the follicle growing. A regenerative signal and a growth signal, two different mechanisms working in the same direction. Now, before we go deeper, it's important to be clear that GHKCU and adenosine still need more large-scale human data. They're promising, but they're not FDA-approved hair loss treatments, and they're still considered experimental in the medical sense. We'll talk more about that later in the video. If you are looking for something that you can use right now to support scalp health and create a better environment for hair growth, you might want to check out the ASLF Hair Growth Boost Serum with award-winning microalgae complex Denzel. This is the serum I use, and it's been keeping my hair full and healthy. Apart from Denzidil, which is a microalgae-based active, it also contains the powerful Bicopil complex, rosemary leaf extract, ginger and licorice root extract, and vitamins A and C. Together, they support circulation, they lower scalp DHT levels, they calm inflammation, and they strengthen the follicle environment. I use this every other evening. I leave it on overnight, and then I wash my hair the next morning. Done. And my scalp and hair are loving it. So if you want to check it out, I'll leave the link down below. Back to the video. What makes peptide science so interesting is that it is a regenerative approach. Instead of shutting down a hormone or forcing a blood vessel open, what if you could simply give the body back the signals it naturally uses to repair tissue and to support healthy follicles. This is where GHKCU comes in. It was first identified in human plasma in the 1970s. A meta-analysis of clinical trials suggests that topical adenosine can help increase hair thickness and density, which is why the combination is attracting attention. One ingredient rebuilds the foundation, the other supports ongoing growth. And together, they represent a completely different way of thinking about hair loss, not blocking hormones, not forcing 
growth artificially, but supporting the scalp's ability to regenerate itself. Now that we know what these molecules are, let's look at how GHKCU actually supports hair growth. What makes GHKCU so interesting is that it doesn't rely on a single mechanism. It supports the scalp on several levels all at once, more like a repair coordinator than a single drug forcing one specific action. First, it may support better blood flow. Studies in wound healing show that GHKCU can promote angiogenesis, the formation of new capillaries. More blood flow means more oxygen and nutrients reaching the follicle, one of the foundations of healthy growth, right? Second, GHKCU helps rebuild the extracellular matrix, the structural scaffolding that supports each follicle. And by encouraging collagen and also this thing I cannot pronounce, it may help Help strengthen the follicles anchor and reduce shedding and it has strong anti-inflammatory and antioxidant activity in lab and skin studies chronic inflammation plays a big part in hair loss because it chokes the follicles slowly calming that environment can help follicles function more normally and finally there's the question of whether GHKCU influences growth pathways like and early research suggests it may upregulate genes associated with follicle activation. This is nowhere near proven yet, right? But the possibility is what gets researchers excited about peptides. So how about adenosine, the stay in growth mode signal? If GHKCU helps rebuild the environment, adenosine helps keep the follicle working. One of the biggest goals in a hair loss treatment is extending the antigen phase, the active growth phase of the hair cycle. Short antigen cycles equal thinning hair. And several clinical studies, mostly from Japan and Korea, show that topical adenosine may increase the proportion of thick terminal hairs. It may prolong the antigen or growth phase of the follicles, and it may improve blood supply through mild vasodilation. The evidence is not huge, but it's consistent enough to suggest a real effect. So when you combine GHKCU and adenosine, you get a repair signal plus a growth signal. Signal. One supports the follicle's foundation, the other encourages it to keep producing thicker strands. So it's probably not going to replace finasteride, but as a non-hormonal support system, it's one of the most compelling combinations available today. In terms of evidence, there is promising research. Animal studies suggest that GHKCU can increase regrowth. Dermatologists have reported improvements in shedding and scalp condition. Adenosine trials show better hair thickness and user satisfaction, but compared to pharmaceutical drugs, this is still very light evidence. We don't have large scale randomized control trials. We don't have long term safety data. We don't have head to head comparisons versus finasteride or minoxidil. There's no FDA approval for treating hair loss. So the right mindset for now is GHKCU plus adenosine is not a replacement. It's a supportive non-hormonal approach worth exploring. If someone decides to try this combination, it's almost always used topically, applied directly to thinning areas, just like with any hair treatment, right? Consistency is everything here. Some people combine it with microneedling to improve absorption, but that comes with its own risks and should be done very carefully. There are clinics out there that are offering this microneedling in combination with GHKCU copper peptide. Just be aware that this is still considered experimental. So what can you realistically expect? A slight reduction in shedding within two to three months is realistic. The first signs of improved thickness around three to four months and more visible hair density around month six. So yeah, the buzz around GHKCU and adenosine represents a genuine shift in thinking instead of choosing between hormonal suppression or doing nothing at all we're now exploring regenerative biology as a third option, one that supports the scalp's natural function rather than overriding it. It is one of the most promising non-hormonal approaches that we have right now. It offers a gentler path for people who wanna support healthier, fuller hair without stepping into hormonal territory. And as research continues, we may finally start seeing a new category of treatments that leverage the body's own repair systems in smarter, more targeted ways. So what do you think about peptides for hair? growth. Have you tried GHKCU or adenosine? Let me know below in the comments. And that is it for today. Check out the ASLF Hair Growth Boost Serum at the link below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.